Okay, we are recording. I just wanted to share that someone, two people from the comment section actually figured out how to solve, how Marx Spitznagel solved for the new Kelly criterion. And I would like to both give them a shout out right away. One of them was Daniel Seemeister, who published nine days ago. The other one was Luca Antonioli, who published three weeks ago. There's also someone who sent me a photo on Twitter of his work, but I didn't look at it properly because I wasn't busy. So if he published the same thing, I appreciate his work as well. But thank you specifically to Daniel and Luca for explaining your step-by-step -step reasoning for how Spitznagel went from this 1.5% number here to this 0.6% number right over here. Let's go through the math. So, okay, where we left off last time was that I didn't understand how he went from this number to this number. I assumed that if your total wealth was here, what you would be doing is taking 40% of it and then gambling it. And then whatever happens to that 40%, it could increase, it could shrink. You take 40% of that and then you gamble that. And then that could increase, it could shrink, you don't know. And you take 40% of that and then you it could increase or it could shrink. And then you take 40% of that and then you take 40% of that and you take 40% of that and so on and so forth. And so when I did the math for that, it didn't come out to be 0.6%, which is exactly what Spitznagel had. So I was left confused and upset and disappointed. And I thought I would learn Python. Anyway, um, the way that we would, um, the way that this is fixed is exactly what um, those two gentlemen who commented on the YouTube video suggested, which is that that's not the way it works. The way that it works is you take your total wealth. Let's say your total wealth is um, one. And you take, um, sorry, let's draw this properly. You take your total wealth, you take 40% of that and you gamble it, that's your wager, and you take 60% and you keep it. And then your 40% could increase if you get a six, if you roll a six and it increases by 50%. It could also, let's say it increases, and then you have a new total wealth. And then from that new total wealth, you take, um, Take 40% of that and you wager it. And then maybe it increases by 1.05%, so then it gets even bigger. And then you take 40% of that. And then you roll a one and you lose half of it. So then it goes here. And you have a new 40%. So when you put it that way, the math starts to make a lot more sense when you put it in. So let's go through that now. Okay, so this is your total wealth. Let's say it is one. You're gonna take 40% of that and you're gonna save 60%. Now, let's say you were to roll a six and your, your, your wager increases by 50%. What would that mean? How would you calculate that? How would your total wealth change? The answer to that is that you would multiply this number, your wager, by 1.5, right? Which is an increase of 50%. So 0.4 which is equal to 40% of your total wealth, which is equal to one, multiplied by 1.5. You add the rest of your wealth to that, which is um, 0.6. Okay? And if you do that, then you get 0 0.4 times 1.5, 
0 0.6 plus 0 0.6, which is equal to 1.2. So every time you roll a 6, you take your, it's as if you're taking, so assuming that you are wagering only 40% of your wealth every time you play with Nietzsche's Demon, the way that you would calculate your total wealth after one round when you roll a six is you take your original wealth, which is one, and you multiply it by 1.2. That's how you calculate it, okay? So that's for when you roll a six, but what if you roll a two, a three, a four, or a five? Well, we can calculate that in exactly the same way. You take your total wealth, which is equal to, TW stands for total wealth. You take your total wealth, which is equal to one, and you have your 40% here, and your 60%. If you roll a two, three, four, or five, you're increasing it by 5%, which means that you can multiply by 1.05%. So you take your 0 0.4, which comes from here, you multiply it by 1.05, and then you add your remainder of 60%, which is uh, 0 0.6. And then when you do that, you get a number of 0 0.4 times 1.05, 0 0.42 plus 0 0.6, which is equal to 1.02. That is what happens when you that is this is this is a factor that you multiply your total wealth by to get the number that that your total wealth will become if you are only wagering 40% of your wealth when you are playing with Nietzsche's demon okay so this applies to dice rolls 2 3 4 5 this applies applies to dice roll 6 and let's do the last one which is dice roll 1 which is total wealth, once again, is equal to one. You're gonna take 40% of that, which is equal to 0 0.4. You multiply it by negative 50%, which is the same as multiplying it by 0 0.5. And then you add to that your wealth that you've saved, which is 0 0.6. So when you do this, you get, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.6, which is equal to 0 0.8. Yeah, that's right. And this is what happens when you get a number one. So what this says is that when you are playing one game with Nietzsche's Demon and you are wagering only 40% of your wealth and you roll a one, it is as if you can multiply your total wealth by 0 0.8 to get the end result when you roll a one and you wager 40%. Okay, so now we have the factors 1.2, 1.02, and 0 0.8. To get the geometric average of these three numbers, we, we, well, we know how to calculate that. 1.2, 1.02, and 0 0.8. So, 1.2 multiplied by 1.02 multiplied by 1.02 multiplied by 1.02 multiplied by 1.02 and this is for when you get a 6 a 5 4 3 2 multiplied by 0 0.8 when you get a 1 and since there are six terms here you raise it to the power of 1 over 6 which is basically the same thing as going like that and what happens when you type all of that in? You get a number, which is this, 1.06, or 0.6%. And where have we seen that before? We did it. That was how you get 0.6% from 1.5%, negative 1.5%. you had to take into account your total wealth and 
keep wagering 40% of your new total wealth every time. That was the mistake I made. That was the correction which Daniel Seemeister and Luca Antonioli had mentioned. That's how you calculate the new New Kelly criterion. So once again, thank you so much to Daniel Seemeister and to Luca Antonioli for sharing how you would calculate this. You have let this series progress further. I really appreciate it. Um, and Daniel, I appreciate your tip here. You say to be really clear what is actually happening. And as I was listening to my old videos, I realized that I wasn't doing that very well. So I will try my best to be more clear with what is actually happening and what Spitznagel is referring to. So thank you once again for watching. We will continue the series and we'll continue to learn more about math. See you in the next video.